the Ron and Fez show starts right now. Okay, let's get down to it, Bopper. Oh, buddies, it's the Ron and Fez show on what science has proved to be a Monday. Uh, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Well, no thank yous in order, but Chris Stanley and I were able to find White Hat. And as I said earlier, I said he's either going to be in a boat or a helicopter. I don't even know why I bothered throwing in helicopter, because just saying boat would have been perfect. But... USA, USA, we're on top of the world. No one can beat us. How It only takes 9,000 cops to find a kid in a boat. We did it. We closed down Boston. It worked. It's Hopefully this will happen again because the excitement and patriotism that is just shooting through the streets. Everybody's heart is just pumping patriotic blood right now. It's the greatest time to be an American in my entire lifetime. It's the greatest time to be from the greatest city, which is Boston. You know, up until the last week, I didn't know how much I loved Boston. Now I decide it's the greatest place ever, and I'm starting to feel Boston strong. Boston is America. America yes, is Boston. That's true. Today, we're all from Boston, I like to say. And uh, Boston Baked Beans throughout the show today. Uh, the excitement level of the feeling of people and the cheering and the happiness. The partying? Just now, the immediate partying? I heard Anthony today trying to throw a cold bucket of water going, Hey, are we comfortable with the police just coming into our houses? Should we be able to let the police... Do and don't even start that because it's USA. 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 This is like today. I walked into work. I was carrying an American flag. And on the other yeah. shoulder, I had a two by four. Okay. And, oh, you know, I was just stopping and getting people to understand that we're all Boston strong today. We're all today for the first day ever. We're all 100%. We agree, and it's exciting, and clam chowder. Oh, it's so good, and, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And Paul Revere. Like a lobster and roll? Cheers, and lobster roll. And it's all, why we should just feel great about it. Forget the fact that you find out that there's a standing army in black running through the streets with high-powered weapons Giant tanks. and tanks and being able to peer into your homes thermal imaging from above that's fine because of usa sweet caroline burp, burp, burp. see that's the thing we can all sing together and feel forget america i don't even care about america it's boston right now United States Boston, Boston strong. Boston. God, Neil Diamond's More great. More than I'm feeling. You know, with all the Boston bands, they got to go and take a guy from the Bronx to be their dude. That's their guy, all right? You don't be criticizing Boston right now. That's who they felt is the guy who represents them. Were you happy, Chris? Were you Boston strong, or <laughs> did it seem a little weird to you? Uh, I, at the time, I was like, he's just in a boat? Come He's on. laying in a boat. Uh, he either shot himself <laughs> or he shot him uh, or someone shot him in the throat. So he just was doing like a dolphin. <gasps> Bad breathing, just the beach dolphin. Well, he set up a shitload of flashbangs next to his head. They say they're not lethal, but it's still an explosive. You'd think that it could have hurt him at some point. He actually yelled out, I already don't feel good before you do that. But we've stopped them all. Now, here's what I do worry about. It being a false flag. Well, we'll find out if this guy's a patsy or not once the cops are done with him. Oh, he's a patsy. Uh, today, at some point, uh, we are expecting to hear what the false flag is. I believe that the 9-11s 
have always been us. Oh, or something. I don't know how thought. the whole thing works out. Wait, so we're 9-11ers? All right, so we'll uh, open up our Boston lines, because today we're on Boston, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. You know, I just want to take time to thank uh, the police, FBI, ATF. I want to thank the MTA. I don't know how many people went up for the congratulations thing. And, of course, the Boston Red Sox. Let's uh, uh, play this thing with Big Poppy, which had to be the highlight for everybody, right? I mean, every, everyone was, were lose, was losing their shit. Everyone was losing their shit when he, when, after he uh, made that, that when, announcement. When he went eastbound and down on everybody <laughs> and brought in a Kenny Powers. Uh, this happened at the game, and it just finally shows that we are finally an XL country. Oh, this isn't playing. Nothing's playing, is it? No. It's all locked up today. It had a good weekend, too, and now it's locked up. Hold on, we're having a little bit of computer problems. Computer did not know that today was a Monday, and it was supposed to do Monday stuff. Here we go. Here's Big Poppy. All right, Boston. <laughs> this jersey that we wear today, it doesn't say Red Sox. It say Boston. We want to thank you, Mayor Menino, Governor Patrick, the whole police department for the great job that they did this past week. This is our fucking city. <laughs> great job. And nobody gonna think this is our fucking city. This jersey, we both don't. He wishes he was back in the DR right now. And all this crazy shit fucking bombs going off. <laughs> no, he's just taking that money back there. So he don't give a shit either way. He could be the king of the Dominican Republic, Big Poppy. He's the king of Boston, though. Oh, hell, oh yeah. He's got that unlocked. So much that they're like, go ahead. It's okay. He said, fuck in front of the children. <laughs> he's like, okay. It's it's fine. It was, it was emotional. And it was just Lenny Bruce has finally won. Big Poppy's kind of fighting terrorism by dropping f bombs. I guess huh? he is. Yeah, he's basically Homeland Security. They should just give him a gun. He should just be strapped on the field at all times. That's the new thing now. If you could, if you just say you were speaking from the heart, you can say whatever you want to on television now. Well, you could always say whatever you want to on television. The FCC never fucked with television. It was always radio. It was always 100%. And even today, some kid somewhere is getting screamed at because he said nipple in some shitty town in fucking Iowa. You missed a fucking dump on that? You're done, motherfucker. You just shit your career out. You just fucked your career and then shit it. Well, wait, why are you saying all those words if they're so bad? I can say it. We're not on the air. There's no way a nun or school children could be hearing this. Damn it. Um... So nobody, uh, from what I can tell, could understand Ant's point of view today. That perhaps you may want to say to yourself from time to time, is this a good idea that all these things are happening? Or do you just get uh, caught up in being Boston strong? Here's Don. Don, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, uh, maybe... Uh... With 9,000 plus cops up there, wouldn't you think maybe there was been one cop check that yard? Maybe even see a little blood. Don't on ever oh. second guess the Boston police force. Oh, Those God. men are oh, heroes. Man. They shut the town down and kept everyone safe in their bedrooms. It was the best thing that could have ever happened. Oh, my God. To second guess. Well, that. What's that guy's fucking problem? Don't you understand that we're Boston strong right now? Sounds like that guy's Al Qaeda strong. That's just my theory. I hope not. I don't know. I'm hearing sleeper cells. 
I hope they stay asleep. Maybe if we all stay in our houses, they'll stay asleep. Well, as long as the cops are outside to protect us. Um, here is uh, Mike. Mike, you're on the Run of Fez show. Yeah, what's up? Peppa, Queen's in the building. Q Burrow. I'd like to uh, I'd like to thank Big Poppy Hicks. By the way, do you always say Queens in the building? Is that a thing with you guys? Oh yeah, yeah. Queens the house, Queens in the building. Yeah, A Town for Astoria, Q Borough, just for you know the general area of Queens. Q U, keeping it real. Then I'd also like to say Manhattan's also taking up residence. Hey, that's also true. Um, I just want to thank Big Poppy Hicks for dropping all those f bombs and keeping all those terrorists out of the big NYC. May first, he's going to start the whole new Chris yeah. Stanley. He is going to be going Terrestrial for. Chris. Terrestrial Chris Stanley. TC. Um, here's Tom. Tom, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Hey, Ron. Real quick. As far as a police officer coming to the house, I get it in Boston and pending danger and all that, but are you concerned as far as when that will stop? Does that mean as far as a domestic violent case? I... That they can come I your house. What's your personally thought? would like to have, to have all the doors and windows taken off our houses and Flintstone some of this shit. You know, okay. if we are going to be the Boston strong states of America, and I want us to be, okay, then we have to leave places that the police can get in and out for our own safety. And I think that that's what Ant was missing today, that it's better safe than free. Freedom late, safety early. With safety, we're not going to get hurt. Whereas if there's too much freedom... We could get hurt. Yeah, we could get hurt. There could be pressure cookers thrown out of our fucking heads. Yeah. Either with bombs in them or not. And I hope the people in Boston continue to cheer when they see police cars. I, th I think we should all move to Southie before it gets too fucking expensive. Because cause with this Boston thing... You really think that could happen? Everyone's going to be moving to Boston. Everyone wants to be as safe as they were. Why not just make... Um, uh, why not just go out there and say to yourself, I will never... This whole place is Boston. So if you're All in right. Detroit, you're in Boston. If you're in Iowa, you're in Boston. Wherever you are, you're Boston. It's a state of mind. More than a feeling. Um, Garth, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, guys. Hey, so uh, Friday evening and all that was going down. Um, that's the first time I've ever seen Twitter freeze up. Social media was fucking blasting. Well, social media was also blasting a lot of rumors, innuendo, and some out-and-out -out lie. Uh, some of the things they had, they had given out the names of White Hat and Black Hat as these two Indian kids and it basically outed them and even I was like okay I can't believe this they got them oh <laughs> no it's two totally different people <laughs> um, and then I had to remember to stay Boston strong yeah uh, the, the media is still up in Boston and still just trying to squeeze every drop they can out of this. That uncle there is, was all over the place again all weekend long. Um, it, yeah, I guess. The uncle, I did see him yesterday. Unfortunately, he had calmed down. He stopped screaming. I liked him better screaming, uncle. I saw. Did you see him when he was crying, like when he was really emotional and fucked up like that? That was pretty good. And here's the weird thing. With White Hat, and I haven't learned their names and I refuse to because... That's giving them power, saying their names. No, it's just it's hard to say something that's just all constants and no vowels. Jakur. No, I mean, my fucking mouth doesn't work that way. But women have been saying to me, they feel so sorry for that kid because his brother made him do it. What? They think that the younger brother, White Hat, yeah, uh, because all of his friends said he was really chill and really cool. Smoked herb. Yeah, and he never would have done this, but his big brother kind of talked him into it. And the deal is that he just happens to be an attractive boy. <laughs> and women think with their vaginas. Oh, ladies. And they all want to bang White Hat right now. 
Well, you're going to start fucking banging a mute because he's all shot up in the throat. Um, here is uh, Jason. Jason, you're on the Run of Fest show. Hey, Ron says, Pep. Hey, Ron, I respect you a lot. Thank you. And I, I, and I understand what you guys are saying. I understand what uh, Anthony was saying earlier. But I just want to know, how we, how do you think they should have handled it? Do you think they should have just, police should have just gone on the normal patrols and hopefully they caught them? Well, I mean, I, I just would like to hear your side. Of, well, first you of all, do you think they needed that many cops and they needed to shut all of Boston down? Or was that showboating? Have you ever seen an American city shut down before, let alone looking for one guy? One guy? It's, no, it's the, the weirdness of this is why aren't we shutting Chicago down all the time for those shootings? Because here's why. The word terror changes the way everybody thinks. And this is just... A gimme. This is just fact. If you throw terror in it, everybody suddenly gets terrorized. If you're saying it was a shooting, you're not. Now, if you think of, of it this way, in the summer, you're going to the ocean. Every year, there's some kind of riptides. People get fucking pulled out to sea. They're killed. Men, women, and children. No one reacts to it. Someone gets bit by a shark, even on the ankle, it's national news. Everybody's freaking out. Because we are more afraid of sharks for whatever reason. And I'm not even saying there is a reason for it. But in terms of crime, the terrorist is the great white shark. He's the one that we are afraid of. Uh, you have... Murders took place all weekend that were more. More people died in, in Chicago, I believe, than uh, died in Boston. And they didn't shut Chicago down. It's just the way that we are right now. We are totally look at the terrorist as the shark that we... You know when it comes to phobias, right? How come you never hear of anyone who has a phobia about going into a bank? And there's been more bank robberies than anyone. Any place. But you never run into somebody who goes, I'm afraid to go to banks because of fucking bank robberies. Because no one's ever brought it up to them before. You throw out the fucking thing in Boston. And they apprehend way more guys than this all the time, but nobody cheers for the cops. No one jumps into it. We have this really strange, weird thing about the terrorist thing is scarier than anything else that we can imagine. So we put a lot of our fear there. And the media, you can say that they're uh, leading it, but really they're only following it. Well, here's the other thing that kills me about the Boston police. Did you hear or watch any of this stuff with the amount of shots being fired? Yeah. How many do you think went out there? There had to be, of, of all the things, hundreds, hundreds of shots. Hundreds of shots. The guy get hit twice. And one of the times might have been into his own throat. Who trains these guys to shoot? Where are they shooting from? I think these guys, I mean, how, how many cops fire their guns, right? So... Would these guys get put in this situation? They practice shooting all the time, do they not? I would think so. But I guess when they're put into this fucking situation, they're like maybe anyone else, and they lose their shit, and they're like, they're just going to fucking fire. They're gonna it sounded like they off. were shooting at that boat a million times. Oh, that was nuts. That's the Friday night And thing. did they hit anybody? No. I know people were posting pictures of bullets going through their fucking house. Um, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866 Ron, Zero Fez. Here's Dave in West Virginia. How you doing, Dave? Hey, what's up, Ronnie? Yeah. Another reason I think they had to go at it so hard was, is, you know, everyone's seen just how easy it is to strike terror. I mean, these bombs weren't sophisticated. So any little fringe group all over the United States, could, you know, now they see we're willing to go at them hard and heavy with everything we have. It, it could very well. But you, but all right, all right. Let's play with that game, though. These two idiots 
that went in there with their pressure cooker bombs didn't even think of a disguise. They were dressed as themselves. You would have had to known you were going to be seen on TV. And then they didn't even run leaving up to that. Apparently, from what I was understanding, they were on their way out to plant more bombs when they got in their initial shooting match. These guys seem to be um, morons. Um, here's Gus, Kansas. You're on the Run and Fed show. Ronnie, you just said what I was saying a little bit ago. All the fucking shots they got at this cocksucker, and they maybe hit him once. That's less than 1% of their fucking shots. These supposed to be the best of the best marksmen? It the is. What are shooting at? Yeah, it was absolutely... Like, when you heard the amount of shots being fired at different things, and the way that I was getting it was just off people's YouTubes that they had put up on Twitter, yeah. and I would remember just sitting there going, I can't fucking believe the amount of lead flying. And then you find that guy, and he had been hit once in the leg and once in the neck, which they're saying maybe he shot himself in the neck. They're saying, yeah, that he tried to kill himself and it went through the neck. Like, he fucked that up. <laughs> Um, like, th why didn't he just bite down on one of his fucking pressure cooker bombs? <laughs> he, uh, like, w w listening to those gun battles, it's crazy how long they go on for. You expect it to just be like a quick volley, like, you know, five, six, seven shots. But it's going on for like two minutes of so just constant gunfire. Uh, Tom, you're on the Run of Fez show. Yeah, going back to Big Poppy's great speech, after he says, this is our fucking city, he says, nobody going to dictate our freedom. Well, what the fuck does that even mean? He had no and, idea what he was saying. And then he says, stay soft. He doesn't stay know. Stay he soft. doesn't fucking know what he's saying. If you put that speech in the middle of an action movie, it could have been like the bad guy saying it. The villain in the film. This is our fucking city. We rule this thing. Well, that's racism. Not all bad guys are dark. All, yeah, that's true. There's some white bad guys, like that fucking diehard bad guy. Oh, yeah, he was Which German. kind of, I was even rooting for him. He had a good team assembled of um, Swedish fucking guys. Tom that. and Daytona, you're on the Run of Fez show. How can you not root for Hans Gruber? Yeah, he got to. Um, I got a, an idea as to why, uh, why that is, Ron, uh, with... You know, with, with killings and murders and, and, and all that kind of stuff, you kind of get the a sense that those people that got killed kind of did something to bring that upon themselves. You know, they were in the wrong part of town they should have been or, you know, involved with some sort of deal or in a, in a gang or something like that. But when you think about terrorists, there's there's the sense that those the people that they kill are innocent. So it, it kind of it, it gives people the sense that, they could get killed by a terrorist, whereas they don't have the same sense that they're going to get killed by a gang member or something because they're going to, you know, stay off the streets at night and that kind of stuff. So I, I think just the randomness of their killing is what makes them scarier than the average, uh, you know, weekend shooting in Chicago. I think it really comes down to the difference, though, like I brought up with the riptides and the sharks, that you would think that a riptide would be scary enough if you've ever been caught in one. It's not up to you where you're going to be going. You're being pulled out to sea. And that never gets the kind of press that a shark gets. And that we do see the terrorist as the shark of crime. We almost see them. It's that we build up in our minds that there's somehow better, stronger, scarier than anything else. Um, and there, 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 By the way, there's plenty of innocent people who get murdered all the time here. Uh, it is, uh, it, you know, the stuff that Ant brought up today about are we okay with this is not being asked by the big media. And I certainly think... Now that we see what happens, we've got to say to ourselves, is this what we really want? If you turn that on, if you weren't from this country, and you turned on your TV and looked at Boston, you would have said to yourself, this country I'm looking at, the army has rolled in, and the army is now running that city. Because the police 
look like the army now. When I was a kid, the police looked like the police and the army looked like the army. You didn't see fucking police wearing helmets, dressed like that. They look like commandos and shit. They are commandos. They're not dressed like them. They're doing the same kind of stuff. So we now know we have these kind of domestic city armies. Is it so crazy to say, hey, is this a good idea? Was anything Ant was saying today crazy at all, or is it worth talking about? Um, and the fact is, they've gone on and had these discussions without us since 9-11. All the police departments now have these tanks and fucking weaponry. And they're getting that they, they, Yeah, of course, uh, that they didn't have before. Uh, John, you're on the Run of Fest show. Hey, Ron, how you doing? I'm a big fan of you guys. been listening for a while, but I lost my satellite connection. Now I'm back on. All I hear is Peppa. I don't hear Fez anymore. Well, Fez had, uh, you said, a difficult weekend, Fez? Yeah, yeah. And you said you couldn't think of anything to talk about today? Yeah, it just, I really, really went blank last well, night. Um, well, there hasn't been a lot in the news, so you can see how that could happen. Uh, here's JoJo in Boston. You're on the Run of Fez show. Yeah, I, I think uh, we should protect our Second Amendment rights and just nuke them all. I mean, these two faggots come into our city trying to push gay marriage on my kids. I mean, it's not happening. I'm a, I'm a strong... All right, here's Anonymous in Boston. How you doing, sir? Not bad. And you? Uh, what can we do for you today? Well, I'm with the uh, Boston PD. That's why I'm not giving you my name because okay. you're not really supposed to be talking. But one of the main reasons that happened the way it happened was we just didn't know. We didn't know if, if there was more bombs. We didn't know. And there could have been so much more people killed, so we had to lock him down where we thought he was. Well, what makes you think that you know more now that you got this one 19-year-old kid than you did before? You may have more bombs there. Again, we may, but the risk of getting these two off the street was what we knew needed to be done. Yeah, but did you think that this kid was making it to some kind of place where he could light up uh, downtown Boston? I mean, that doesn't really make all that much sense. You knew that he was on the run and that he was in one neighborhood, and if he had any of the bombs at all, they were pressure cookers. They weren't nukes. Well, look what, look what uh, two pressure cooker bombs did down in Boston on Monday. Yeah. And, but that's exactly where you knew if they would have been anywhere, they would have been with him, right? Again, we don't, most terrorists, yeah, I'm going to use that word loosely, terrorists, if they're um, you know, very serious ones that are in a big group, they don't carry these things with them. They set them all up at one time. Right. So, so we, we weren't sure. But, but you we, haven't been sure of anything since finding him. You don't know whether he belongs to a bigger cell that are going to put out more bombs even now. I personally don't know. I don't know what anybody else knows. Right, I, mean, there, I agree. So much, there was so much, there's still so much information that's not being released by higher, higher ups. Yeah, I, w I will so, agree with that, but the, the weirdness of that was to shut down an entire city, uh, which I don't think I've ever seen before. Uh, and, no, I don't think it's been done. And I don't think even 9-11... When we had that, we, you know, we had guards at the at the bridges and tunnels and all that, but the city went on. I was walking the streets that night that now, day. I mean, yeah. it wasn't... Let me ask you this. If there was word that one of those bombers, terrorists from 9-11, was running around in the city, I mean, you kind of have to look at it the same way. I know. I, I definitely think it's worth worth discussing, though. I think it's worth oh, sitting down and talking about. Um, did you think the Boston PD did a great job? Personally, I think so. I mean, we had a, there was a lot more than just BPD there. There was officers from every department in the area, along with a lot of the federal, you know, <clears throat> agencies. At one point, they said they had there was about. Nine 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 thousand ninety five hundred officers in the area, and that wasn't just in Watertown. That was Watertown, Boston, Waltham, now, all the areas. Let me just seriously ask you this: Do you think this kid was the most dangerous uh, criminal in the nation's history? 
It makes him history. No, not at all. Because you, you realize he was treated that way, right? Oh, absolutely. And you can, I mean, I know that these people in, in the Watertown era, they were terrified. Yeah. Yeah, uh, there's no doubt that they were. I just thought it was odd that the rest of Boston was shut down. All right, um, I got some people looking at me over here. So. Okay, thanks for calling, so I appreciate it. All right. And you guys have made us all Boston strong, and we're Bostoned up, and this is our fucking city, and stay soft. These yards, I want to see if he said stay soft. I got to look into that. Um... All right, here's Jay. Jay, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, Ron, I'm in the military. Uh, I kind of work on the, the special side of things, so you see a lot of the whole counter-terror stuff. Um, it was kind of surprising to see all that in Boston, but you got to think about it. Um, r- right when the older guy got killed, I turned to my coworker and I said, that 19-year-old scared shitless now. And that's exactly what happened. He ended up hiding in somebody's boat in their backyard because he had no idea where to go. He had nowhere to go. Um, And he certainly, it didn't seem like they had even big plans for themselves after they they, they blew up the initial bombs. Nothing else seemed like it was thought out of, are we leaving town? Are they going to know who we are? They were hanging out. Hey, were there any cameras on the street? I mean, I don't think that we're looking at brilliant Hans Gruber type criminals here. No, and, and it's what we keep running into with these guys. If you remember the D.C. sniper back a few years ago. Morons. It was, it was an older, impressionable guy, who, or an, an older guy who had an impressionable youngster that he could manipulate. And, you know, it takes two most of the time to be able to get something like this done. So, um, yeah, they, they, not that the Boston PD overreacted, but, you know, they, they shut down the area to say they needed to shut down, but it's, it always goes back to an older guy and a younger guy and somebody yeah. that's close to somebody. And, you know, in your mind, there's always some kind of a brilliant scheme going on. And afterwards, you find out all the time that it's an idiot. Same things happen when you got, like, a psycho killer killing women. You have it in the back of your mind that this is some kind of silence of the lambs. And you find out it's a guy who, when he's not doing this, is camping out next to the fucking track. You know what I mean? He doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. Um, I do think, and I'm being serious now, and this is why I'm just joking a little bit about the Boston Strong because the bat... The, the back padding has been uh, phenomenal. But I thought it was very interesting today that Anthony was saying stuff that I'd like to see in the I'd like to see on Fox News, MSNBC, not judging, not going back and saying, but just you know, not blaming anyone, but just saying, okay, now that we've seen how something like this goes down, is this what we want? To have happen in the future, um, are we okay with having an army of police taking over the city, or what could be done better? Because we were apparently a one hundred percent mind that this was the only thing that we could have done. Michael, you're on the Run and Fez show. Well, I don't, I don't think we were at one mind. I think it just happened. I think, you know, it's very interesting that without any kind of federal order, they didn't technically circumvent posse comitatus. They didn't declare martial law. Suddenly there were 10,000 mili- there was a, there was an entire battalion of military, uh, occupying a city and they did it for, let's say, three or four hours. Nobody could move. That is, that's the only thing worth talking about and examining. Right? I I agree a hundred percent, and these guys um, were, handled it like a military op- operation, like an occupying army. And you saw what happened that night when people did were walking along these streets, either coming out of bars, they were thrown to the ground. Blah blah blah. It is certainly worth talking about. Now I will say this as something to have you worry less. It's going to be so expensive. It's going to cost so much money that I'm not sure it's something that you could keep going full time. Right. I, is this how we're going to react to every single 
event that happens, we're going to call out 10,000 militarized police and shut everybody down every single time it happens? Well, yeah, because now... Places at once. Yeah, l- let's uh, look. If something like this happens anywhere else, you're going to be like, like, why didn't we get what Boston had? Why didn't they shut Chicago down? Why hasn't San Francisco been shut down? Oh, sure, then you want it. Yeah. Everybody will be saying, uh, look, here's what we expect to happen. I do think it should be talked about. I Man. do think, uh, I thought Ant brought up some valid things. But I also want to point out to all the, hey, we have the guns that can stop an, uh, an army, and that's why we need our own weapons. No fucking way. You saw the firepower that they had. You saw what they had in the sky. You saw they have tanks now. They have yeah. tanks that they could run into Boston. Um, here is uh, Tom, Strong Island. You're on the Ron Fez show. Hey, Ron Fez. What's up, fellas? Hey, bud. I'm just calling. The, the, um, I was just listening before about the, uh, the military coming into Boston. And you need to realize that they were acting under the state, under the, the governor. They're not actually federal troops. So technically, it's not martial law. No, well, technically, it's not martial law. And technically, we haven't been in a war since fucking World War Two, but ask the people of Vietnam if they were in a war, you know, um, just because we're not calling it martial law, uh, you could all you needed to do was to look at that and say these they've shut Boston down. I don't know what else you call it besides martial law. Well, no, it, no, it's a slick end run around, again, the, uh, I think the previous call is the posse comitatus. It, it's definitely, without a doubt, a slick end run around, uh, you know, the posse comitatus. Posse comitatus aspect of, of the government. That's all I want to say, guys. All right. Uh, you know, hey. Gorilla Bob just wrote and said that the, uh, the California cop killer preceded this. And that's what we were saying. Dude, aren't, those, aren't they just getting a little carried away with how they're going after this guy? That was the Chris Dorner thing. That was, yeah. I think, within two days, there was a million-dollar bounty on the guy's head. A million-dollar reward. Just for Dorner, the one cop killer. And that's because he killed a cop and not a citizen. Um, here's, uh, Mark. Uh, Mark, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, buddy, you sound like a million bucks. You too, my friend. Uh, I got a question for you. Uh, just out of curiosity, uh, I have family that actually live in New England, so, uh, I can definitely understand, uh, the terror that they were feeling at the time. But why do you think there was a tragedy that was ten times worse in Texas where, you had more than 15 innocent people were, were immediately killed in the explosion, and, and hundreds and hundreds of people lost their houses, and they have no place to go, and yet all the media is right here on Boston where four people were died, and these two yahoos were being an idiot, as opposed to an entire town wiped off the face of the earth. Well, because this thing is a sexier story. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's that simple. I mean, it goes back. Look, are, uh, are people more afraid of heart disease or AIDS. You you know, everybody that you talk to uh, is like, oh, i got to get my cholesterol down while they're eating fucking ice cream. <laughs> but, you know, you your best chance of dying in this country is heart disease. But if you hear anything about AIDS, you really react. There are some things that give us the great white shark feeling. And terrorists is right up there. I could actually say uh, that we're, you know, great white sharks give us the terrorist feeling. It's the same exact thing. They've got it right now. They're the fucking headliners. That thing that blew up in the shithouse down in in Texas, but like, yeah, factory blew up. Well, I hope that thing starts getting more attention because there there was practically criminal activity in that place, with 1,300 times the amount of that explosive being stored there. Have you ever worked in a factory? No, I haven't. I have. It seems to me like everyone's always ready to blow up. I I, uh, was surrounded by factories where I grew up at. My school It was like in the middle of oil refineries. Things used to go off all the time. My uh, my, uh, brother-in-law's dad uh, blew up in a factory fire they could never even have a proper funeral for him this thing it actually used to happen a lot more in this country when we had more um factories but again that has nothing to do with the, the what we're talking about why the media follows it is because that's the story 
that the people are interested in. Do you think that you're going to be able to keep people watching TV based on the fact of how many pallets is supposed to be stored in a certain warehouse? They're not going to give a fuck about that because they don't live next to a fertilizer plant. You're, this has nothing to do with the lives lost, the number, blah, blah, blah. It has more to do with, in your fantasy in your head, What's the worst thing that could possibly happen? I'm walking along and a fucking bomb blows up. And I'm with my fucking kids. No one wants to deal with that type of thing. This is uh, where they got us. Um, here is um, Andrew. You're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, guys. What's going on? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it definitely, you, you shut down a city and they're talking about, like, oh, when does it come to the point when you stop, you know, you start saying that, all right, enough is enough. You, you can't shut down a city for everything. But I don't think they just shut it down for anything. you got a freaking guy walking around with a bomb, potentially. He's got you know, a pressure cooker. Walking around with a gun, you kill one person with a gun, two people, three people. But a bomb, you well, walk uh, uh, around uh, uh, could he have killed more people if they would have just pulled guns out and started shooting? You know, I mean, it's tough to say. It's not you know, tough to say. He could have killed more than three people in a crowd any time he wanted to. Absolutely, yes. So the, 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 it, it has more to do with the terror thing and this idea of bomb, because they were even saying that the bombs that they were throwing out of their car were basically pipe bombs, where they're actually lighting a fuse and chuck them out the back. Um, but yeah, one guy with an automatic weapon could have killed a lot more people than that. We just have this extra fear of terrorism. It's better just to admit it, that we have it, and then figure out, okay, now what do we do with it right now? I didn't even know that because it was a terrorism charge, he doesn't get Miranda rights. I never fucking realized that shit. How do you not follow the fucking whole thing that's been going on since 9-11 where people screaming now they have the right to kill American citizens oh, this Patriot, is in the Patriot news Act. every fucking Patriot day Act. yeah well wh how are you now sh shocked that this guy doesn't get his straight Miranda rights he's fucking seen as an enemy soldier against the United uh, States um, here's uh, Dan Dan you're on the Ron Fez show morning Ron yeah, yeah. The, the government's responding to the threat and I work in emergency services, and we have we have a game plan, but we have to respond, and we're going to respond with more of a force than what's been um, thrown at us. So shutting down a city for two shooters or shutting down a country for two towers brought down is the response for that threat. But does that make it the correct response? We We agree it's the response for that threat, but is it the correct one? It's, we haven't been doing this for thousands of years in our country. We're there fighting overseas on a daily basis on on their principle. But here we we haven't experienced that. So this is our response. In yeah. ten years, it'll probably change. But right now, it's, it's what we have at our disposal. Yeah, I think it, just because we have it at our disposal doesn't mean that we should do it. I think that the... The stuff that Ant was bringing up today probably should have been on the table a long time ago. Why, why aren't we talking about this? Do we really want to live in a country where these urban armies now can come in and say, everybody stay off the streets? And uh, we have reason to believe there's somebody in this area. I'm coming into your house. And you guys back up against the wall, and I'm going to go through and check stuff out. I, I don't understand why it just felt like that is our response, that's something we have to do. What would we have done if someone said, you're not coming into my fucking house? I got a lot of fucking weed in here. You know? Um, let's go over to uh, Jack in Brooklyn. You're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, buddies. Yeah. Um, I got into a conversation uh, with somebody yesterday who suggested that the bombings actually had something to do with, I think it's called the U.S. Magnitsky Act. 
Um, you can Google it, like um, U.S. like U.S. freezes U.S. officials' assets, and basically, I guess it's an it's an act that the U.S. has against Russia. And so, the week prior to the bombing in Boston, they were levying um, visa and financial sanctions against a bunch of Russian officials. And so, basically, you know, we already were kind of like. I've Supposedly, though, the Russians are fighting with these Chetskins, and this just gives us and Russia more of a chance. The weird thing is, uh, uh, I remember the last Winter Olympics saying that the next Winter Olympics is going to be close to these fucking lunatics, and Russia really has got to throw down hard. So the next Winter Olympics, which is coming up in what, three years, next two year. years, next year? Yeah. Uh, it could be a little hairy. And I'm telling you right now, I don't know if it's worth it if you're a skater. I'm just saying. Um, here's uh, Craig. Craig, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, Ron. Hey, uh, I-, I wanted to thank you for being a hero also throughout all this. That you tre- even tried to revitalize that dumpster fire, which Davey Mack calls a career on Thursday. Mm. Unlistenable radio, man. Hope it doesn't happen all the time. What? It's just what the meanness. What fuck is this asshole talking about? He's just r- ripping Davy Mac and saying he's unlistenable. Yeah. Where Chris sits and listens to him and just makes goo goo eyes at him. Goo goo eyes. It's um, weird. Yeah, it is weird. Uh, here's Mike. Mike, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, Ron. Fez. You know, I think a, a remedy for the search and seizure when somebody is, uh, when they've got a big manhunt like this would be just to have the exclusionary rule that applies to unreasonable search and seizures in drug cases and car stops all the time to just apply to any evidence that is obtained pursuant to Patriot Act uh, wiretaps or uh, a, a terrorism. How about when people are getting on a plane? People get busted all the time for having some fucking weed when they're getting on a fucking plane or having a couple of bindles of coke. Uh, they're not going to fucking let go of that. They come into your house and they see something. It's at the very least in the back of their mind. At the very fucking <laughs> least. Um, here's uh, Andy in Boston. You're on the Running Fest show. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking the call. Call all the time. Um, all right. So bear with me. Two, I think two things. I, um, first, I think, obviously, Boston took it, it really took it personal wanted to make a point, um, turning fear and helplessness into, you know what, uh, let's show the world, you know, how obnoxious we can get with, you know, the military and everything going after these people. So I think they really, the, the, the point of us looking vulnerable really, really got to the, you know, the mayor, the governor, and all people involved. So that's one. And then two, um, believe me, we all thought about why this guy, why it took so many people. And it took till fucking, you know, 930 at night. I, I mean, me and my wife sat there, glued to the TV, and we're like, really? This is taking that long. I obviously believe um, personal protection, but they wanted at no cost this guy to either kill himself or be killed. And I really think that's why they, they were so, so systematical and, and, and very, very, um, you know, uh, obviously took them so long to do it because they, they wanted this fucking guy alive more than they've ever wanted anybody alive. they got to get the info. So that's kind of my take on it. Do you feel any safer in Boston right now? Well, you're gone. All right, we've got another guy from uh, Luke and Mass. Go ahead, Luke. You're on Run Fez. Hey, what's up? So I was just thinking uh, a few minutes ago, what would we all be saying if he hadn't ever been caught? Would we be saying uh, we didn't do enough? Or, I mean, we may have had uh, a big reaction to it, but it is one of the first times something like this of this magnitude has happened. And we actually know who it is, kind of, just a few days afterwards and can go after You know who at least these two guys are. You don't know if you got more of these guys. Well, yeah. Would you be surprised if it's just the two of them? Well, you know, it's it's like a dress rehearsal. We didn't know what was going to happen. And now we can, in the future, make adjustments. And who's we making the adjustments? Who gets to decide? Well, yeah, I mean... I, I, not me. Yeah, and not me, and uh, that's that's the thing that needs to be discussed. Who the fuck is in charge? And 
who decides how fucking heavy we come in and how not. Um, Because there was, you know, we're talking about safety issues. There was a lot of fucking lead being fucking thrown around private uh, streets out there. Uh, It wasn't a matter of a fucking gun battle. There was just flying fucking bullets. Let's go over and talk to Hard Rock Johnny. Johnny. How are you? What's up? Craziness, man. It's I, I would I was listening this morning to O and A and just kinda of listening to Ant going off on I, I just I don't know where I, where I stand on this whole thing. I think it was enough, but is it too much? It's it's kind of a, a really slippery slope, but I, I wouldn't want to see it any other way and they end up with the results that you everyone wanted, which is, you know, capturing this kid. Really? I mean Yeah, I mean I I mean I, how I, do you know that's the end of it though? Well, I mean that's that's uh, it's an interesting question. And why do you want this kid so much more than you want any of the kids shooting people in Chicago or people being shot in Los Angeles? What is it about some murders that were like, no matter what, I want this to be solved, and other murders that we're okay with not being solved? Yes, yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's a conundrum, not a moral one, but just a conundrum in general that, you know, where where does it go and how does it end and, and you know, what makes it you know what's the right where's the line and you know is it and see that's what i thought uh, yeah that's what i thought anthony was bringing up on the show today i don't know if he uh, he felt completely heard by it but the fact of the matter is this is something that adults would discuss that citizens would discuss and we move on from there i don't see that this is being debated in the media i see the media doing a more of a uh, we are the champions, and don't you feel great about being American? Don't you like Boston? Yeah, we've all liked Boston. We've always liked Boston. Boston never, this was no reflection on Boston being a bad place or whatever. They we totally, get it. They totally redeem themselves, though. Um, but, uh, Johnny? Yes? You have proven to me once again that you're closer to being a Nazi than anything else. He would have been in that Hitler youth, no problem. Well, uh, Mussolini youth, that's in his blood. Uh, Everyone always lets the Italians off scot-free. God, I'm fascist. All right. Talk to you later, Johnny. Later, boys. Um, here's Mike in Florida. You're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, to take a diff- little different angle on it, in Israel... From what I've read, they don't make such a big deal out of a uh, terrorist attack. Their idea is kind of to, to, to catch the terrorists, but then the very next day, go back to trying to live a normal life. Like they blew up a bus over there, and the next day, that a different bus was running that same line. It seemed like the same thing, uh, you know, uh, London's had to put up with terrorist attacks uh, many times because of Chris Stanley's people, the Irish. And they, you know, sweep up and keep moving. Uh, I never saw them shut their whole town down uh, over some guy who had a pressure cooker. You're kind of giving the terrorists more power when you start building memorials and having moments of silence and, and on and on and on. It's almost as if you're making an industry, you're kind of doing some of the terrorist work for them. All right, thanks, man. 866 Ron Zero Fez. 866 Ron Zero Fez. Here is our good friend, Gorilla Bob. Hey, good morning, guys. Hey, uh, somebody called before, and they said that because this is the first time this type of a thing happened, uh, it's like a dress rehearsal, and the next time it'll be fine-tuned. And in your brilliance, as usual, you said, who is it then that's going to do the fine-tuning? Who's going to make the difference? And I think, just to go back to something you said a little earlier, this is fucking expensive. And whoever pays the bills, whoever's writing those checks, they're the ones that are going to fine-tune it. I don't think it's going to happen again because it's going to, it costs so much fucking money to have all of those guys there. It costs a ton of money. And in the meantime, no money changed hands in Boston that day. So you're looking at like $350 million of business that doesn't take place. Uh, all because some fucking weird kid is bleeding and laying in the back of a boat. And I think that when you fuck with the money, again, to quote the great Ron Benning thing, right. you, you, they, they will fuck with you. If you remember, after 9-11, the city was shut down, and one of the things they kept saying was, go and shop. Go right. and shop. Go and shop. That's all. That's all I got. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. All right, my friend. Bye. Um, 
866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Uh, here's uh, Dave. Dave, you're on the Ron Fez Show. Hey, what's going on, guys? Yeah. Um, you know, this, this whole thing, I think uh, Anthony definitely was on something. It, it is an overreaction, I believe, you know, and I think this has been going on since 9-11. And, you know, you could look at all the conspiracy theories, but there is some validity to it, you know. Why, why the fuck do our police have military weaponry and tanks? I mean, what happened to the day that the cop, a long time ago, I remember you said it, Ron, yeah. used to beat your ass, take you to the edge of town, and tell you to never come back if you're fucking molesting a kid or doing some shit like that. Now they fucking pull out all the stops. I mean, you guys played that heartbreaking video a long time ago, fucking cops invading somebody's house for weed and shooting their dog. The fact that even I mean, very small towns have SWAT now is... It's fucking crazy. It's bizarre. And I can tell you in, in New Mexico, because mm-hmm. I used to live in New Mexico, their police chief in Albuquerque, New Mexico, just got fired because they were shooting so many perps. It, 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 the only reason why I bring that up is because I would hard, be hard pressed to see somebody pulling some kind of shit like that in those southern, those southwest states because everybody's got a fucking gun. Um, everybody's got a gun, and 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 just like that stupid tweet that that fucking guy did from Arkansas saying, you know, what did he say about how, uh, you know, well, I guess, you know, if everybody had fucking AKs or fucking, you know, assault rifles in the house, that guy wouldn't be running around town hiding, you know, and so I don't know, I just think it's something kind of odd going on here, this thing's really fishy to me, and I'm yeah, not a conspiracy but guy. But here's just, the thing is, it doesn't even have to be a conspiracy, there's enough showing that should be discussed, it doesn't have to be false flag. It could just be the flag. You can say to yourselves as Americans, we're not blaming, we're not attacking, in the same way that we don't need to be cheering about 9,000 cops that were eventually able to get to two fucking um, criminals. Um, Are we doing things correctly? Is this what we want? Do we want to shut the fucking place down because... A, the original cops didn't stop this kid and let him run down the street, laying him back of a boat, and then we shut Boston down. Um, Or do we want to just go, let's fly in Neil Diamond and have him sing and we fucking do flags back and forth? Because that's certainly a lot more fun and enjoyable than than fucking thinking. Um, Here is Mike. Mike, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, guys, uh, a little nervous here, but, I mean, I wanted to know what you thought about, um, you know, there being a copycat, because this guy, you know, these terrorists, you know, these soldiers, what they really were, they shut down a whole city for days. You know, who's to say that some crazy black job out there might do the same thing or something similar to that and get all the notoriety that these people, that these terrorists, that these soldiers got by doing this crazy, this, this Ridiculous nonsense. Well, he, so. he, well, yes. Of obviously, you always run the thing of, uh, of fucking copycat killers. But I will say this about their notoriety: you will forget them, just like you forget every other fucking killer. Just the way that every time that we have a new school shooting, somebody is saying. America's lost their innocence. You got to be fucking an idiot to go back to being in- innocent for as many times that we fucking lost it. I mean, I'm sorry. If we didn't lose our innocence after Kennedy and then his brother, and Martin Luther King, then stu- we're just stupid in- innocence and nothing can fucking change us. Um, here's Eric, Nebraska. You're on the Running Fest show. Hey, Ronnie. Yeah. Hey, you know, when, when uh, Anthony and Jimmy were arguing about this point, I, I called in and I brought up the point to Jimmy, and this goes along with what you said earlier about the cops knocking the door and wanted to come in, and you're like, no, I got a bunch of weed in here. And I brought up the point to Jimmy, and I said, you know, the cops come walking in there, and let's say you've got kitty porn on your computer. Maybe they're not looking for that now, but what's to say that a note isn't made of that, and down the road they come back, and Vizier says, oh, no, they wouldn't do that. Well, I've got a good friend of mine who is with SWAT team with Denver Police Department, and I called, I texted him, and then I talked to him about an hour and a half ago, and he said, oh, definitely. He said, if they came through there and found things in your house, 
that kind of raised some eyebrows. He says there was almost guaranteed there was a note made, a mental note. They would be morons yeah. not to. They would yeah. be idiots not to think. Oh, put him on our regular list. Uh, you know what I mean? Like that would be that would be shoddy police work if they did not look for yeah. uh, clues. Um, look, let's. Whatever we're saying about Boston is this: you have a team that goes sixteen and zero, and then you're going to fucking end up losing the Super Bowl. And then the time that you get a chance to avenge that loss, you're going to lose that team again? Twice, baby. So like think that? of that when you're talking Boston strong. Um, Larry, you're on the Run and Fez show. Yeah, Ronnie. Uh, another thing that got me a little bit worried uh, is just kind of like the national fervor that was happening. Like It just seemed like it got really scary. It was like a little reminiscent of 9-11 where it just seemed we were so worked up, so ready to find this enemy, that say it's like something, like if it was given back to Iran, that like, hey, Iran had something to do with this bomb, I don't know, I, I think we fucking, we would have bombed Iran. Like, I don't know, it was kind of scary, and like, I don't know, it was a little reminiscent of the post-9-11, where like, hey, let's just fucking kill somebody, let's go nuts. Like, it was just, I don't know, it was a little scary to me. Just it, that. it certainly is more about, emotion than intellect and uh that's something that we have to i i do not think it's such a bad thing if we stop and say hey why do we keep acting like this you know and you know when you are watching them with the flags and the boston strong even if you weren't a hundred percent into it you're a little into it you're like yeah we got that guy. We did it. It feels kind of good to be that stuff. And then, like, there's the Red Sox. There's fucking big... Yeah, oh, my God. I knew Neil was going to be here. Awesome. Oh, jeez. He can't even sing along with his own song. Oh, fuck. <laughs> um, here is Kristen in Georgia. You're on the Running Fest show. Hey, Ronnie B. Yeah. I think what's so interesting about this is I know everyone's kind of got the whole the ends justifies the means sort of thought process. But it wasn't the shutdown of the city that caught this guy. It was some dude realizing something right with his boat and just going and looking at it. He went down now, to smoke. The weird thing is, suppose we would have said, hey, instead of everybody in staying inside their house, everybody get outside their house. Take a look around. Is there some fucking guy around there? You keep an eye out. Maybe we would have done this thing in ten fucking minutes. See, that's the scary Great. thing to me with going in, with forcing their way into people's houses. What if he was inside one of those houses and keeping people hostage until it was all clear, and then they created a situation where someone got killed because of that? Well, those people would have been as good as dead to begin with. If someone comes in and they've got a gun to your head, that has to be dealt with. Um, would you have rather they lived happily ever after, just them and the hostages? I would not mind uh, a new TV show called The Hostages and the Hendersons, where there was just some people that go in, take hostage of a regular family, yeah. and then end up becoming a family themselves. Wow. And the, the, the tagline would be, Sometimes the people you love have a gun to your head. It's kind of a Charles in charge. Both handguns. Um, okay, uh, Rob, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Hey, Ronnie B., how you doing, brother? Kind of good. Um, listen, uh, I, I totally agree with, you know, with what you're saying, but it, it, it's almost like they ripped the what they were going to do out of some movie script, and you're almost waiting for Bruce Willis to show up and start... You know, telling people what's going to what's going to go on. Mm. It's very reminiscent. Uh, it's almost like they, you know, went to Hollywood and said, "What should we do here? Let's shut the town down." I mean, so you're saying Six Sense? Uh, more like Die Hard. Wow, well, I didn't see that one. I saw Six Sense though. You never saw Die Hard? Mm -mm. Any good? Yeah, Hans Gruber uh, was Bruce Willis dead in that? No. I, I know what you're saying, but did you really watch it all the way to the end? Yes, I watched all the way. There's like five sequels. He's the same character. He didn't die. Is he dead in all of them? No, no, because he seems like he's alive. No, because he is alive. But he's dead because he has a sixth sense. No, there's no sixth sense dealing with I see Bruce Willis. 
for y'all can. It's got the DVD. Do 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 do. Uh, Donald Trump wants us to waterboard the bombing suspect, even though he's got a hole in his throat, and the water would just pop up like when you have a hole in the hose. How, what can we do to get Donald Trump in some sort of government position? Uh, by the way, we really couldn't get to this the other day, but Chris Stanley has a lot of great...